platform. Uh, it's released by Gartner out of a study. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, but you'll start hearing more of that. Um, we're going to talk about using WordPress uh, not only as basically a browser-based experience, uh, but expanding that beyond to other devices, uh, VR gaming, uh, implications through MarTech stacks, um, e-commerce, uh, voice assistants, um, and a lot of uh, personalization integrations uh, that are coming to, coming to be. Um, we'll talk about what is available now, and we'll also talk about some stuff that is not maybe quite mature, uh, but there's some opportunities uh, maybe for the entrepreneurial crowd uh, to pick up on uh, some of the things that are happening in the future. Uh, quick background on me, I'm Stephen Word. Um, I'm the Innovation Program Manager at WP Engine based out of Austin, Texas. Um, I'm a core contributor, not doing that a whole lot these days, uh, but it's something that I'm proud of and I owe a lot of my WordPress skill set um, to that community. Um, I do maintain the RSS feeds component of uh, WordPress and uh, largely people think that is dead and unimportant. I'm going to make an effort to prove that wrong here today. Um, I have quite a few plugins. Uh, I used to work for an agency here. Um, and then on the fun stuff, uh, really enjoy making instrumental hip hop, craft beer, and uh, hiking, which is kind of hard in Texas, but give it a go anyway. Um, so the first thing I want to do is talk about Generation Z. Uh, so this is basically people born uh, from 1996 to present. Um, and they're the people that are coming online uh, or are basically where the market is heading. Um, this is the crowd that we have to win over uh, if we want to keep growing uh, the WordPress space beyond the 30%. Uh, this is a very important demographic to cater to. Uh, they currently represent about 25% of the population, have about $40 billion of buying power in the United States. Um, and the most interesting thing or the biggest differentiator is they're almost never on, offline um, by the numbers. Uh, so 48% of this demographic believes uh, that they want authenticity. Um, this is one of the most important uh, aspects of their online world. And we're not talking about authentication uh, or login and credentials. What we're actually talking about is legitimate reviews. Uh, and people not gaming things like TripAdvisor or Foursquare. Um, they want the experience to be genuine uh, and truthful. Um, they also say that about 50% of them uh, will bail on a site if it doesn't cater to some level of personalization. Um, with things like Instagram and Facebook, uh, you see more and more of these things starting to appear, uh, but it's becoming increasingly important um, and we should pay attention. Um, large majority of them also do not uh, go more than a single day in a year uh, without some sort of online interaction. That could be through uh, listening to a podcast, uh, mobile devices, um, video games, uh, but they're always online. Um, and then 72% of them also say uh, that the primary function of the internet for them is entertainment. Uh, this is also somewhat of a shift uh, in the generations from the past. You usually view that as a source of information. It's where you get your news. Uh, but with the younger crowd, uh, you know, they're more involved with things like Instagram, Netflix, Twitch. Uh, basically, uh, entertain me. Um, so yeah, to contrast uh, with uh, the boomer generation, uh, they were always on for news, right? Uh, they can go two, three days without the internet, no problem. A little bit better at detaching. Um, but they do demand higher levels of security and privacy. Uh, now this is also very interesting because um, it's kind of antithetical to what the generation coming online now is wanting, um, whereas they're willing to sacrifice personal data more uh, for more authentication or for a more authentic and personalized experience. Um, uh, so here we go, just kind of the uh, evolution of the internet from about the time I jumped on. Um, and what you'll notice is as you move your way from, right to, or from left to right, um, everything is becoming more natural. Uh, so like in the early days, uh, you had a terminal, no graphical interfaces. Um, even very, very early days, you didn't even have a mouse or a keyboard or any type of tactile way to interact uh, with the computer. Um, then along come the 90s, uh, you start getting things like Windows, um, mice and keyboards are a lot more popular. You get flashier monitors, uh, beepers and pagers uh, is kind of a step towards being online. Um, lots of cords, 2000s, you get uh, WordPress shows up here, um, smartphones, tablets. Uh, this is probably like where things really started to shift. Um, you start getting content management, uh, so people are using databases and actually updating content uh, on a daily, regular cadence. It's not static environments like you saw early on. Um, and then as we continue on towards present day in the future, um, it comes more and more of interacting with the web in natural ways. Um, things like being able to talk to your computer or your device um, and or being able to predict what your next actions are. Um, this is the direction that I believe that the internet is going to continue to go 
Um, and once again, I think it's important for us to pay attention if we want to keep uh, our dominance in the market. Um, so back to this digital experience uh, buzz term here. Uh, so the term is coined by Gartner. Uh, they're a marketing research company, uh, very popular. I'm sure a few of you are familiar. Uh, so WordPress has always uh, been in this quadrant called web content management. Um, it focuses on security, dynamic content, um, basically catering to browsers and mobile devices uh, with a strong focus on information. Uh, to contrast that, uh, digital experience platforms, uh, generally people in this space are things like Adobe Experience Manager, Sitecore, uh, $100,000 products that are very expensive, um, and WordPress is starting to enter into this space and bringing uh, a lot of those type experiences that are uh, normally reserved for people with very large budgets, um, way down market, uh, and I think that we can uh, adopt some of these. Uh, so quick differentiators here, uh, personalization. Um, so being able to predict what you're going to do, remembering you, um, it's getting a little harder with GDPR stuff uh, as of lately, um, but it's still really, really important. Um, integrations with things like analytics, uh, chatbots, um, being able to take a, an article that you're reading on a browser, take that to the car and listen to it. Um, being able to control the content of like a billboard uh, on the other side of town as opposed to just uh, being able to market through a single channel uh, at home when someone is physically at their device. Um, and once again, a strong focus on entertainment. Uh, so it's all about the integrations. Uh, so you have things like smart home and IoT devices. Um, through tools like If This and That, you can change the temperature of your house um, from Boston while giving a presentation. Uh, you can listen to audio uh, that can be published uh, right there on the website. Um, one of my colleagues actually has a very cool VR uh, experience that we'll demo here in a little bit. Um, and then of course mobile isn't going anywhere. Um, one of the core focuses on this uh, talk today is going to be on voice um, and that's basically because that's where I spent my last six months of focus. Uh, so it's not necessarily a point of emphasis, but I do believe it is probably the most mature of the technologies we'll talk about um, for getting utilization out of it uh, in present day. Uh, so it will be everywhere. Um, so a couple of things that being able to listen to a site or listen to web content opens up. Uh, you can now multitask. You don't necessarily have to be on the tab uh, or in the browser that you're looking at. Uh, you could be listening to the content from, let's say, uh, the New York Times, uh, while also shopping on Amazon, buying new shoes. Uh, voice assistants are definitely taking over. Um, I think I have like four of these things in my house right now, and not exactly sure how that happened. But um, and then also being able to reach people uh, through channels that aren't necessarily um, ones that we think of today. Um, so this is my colleague on the right, Amanda, and what she is doing is actually consuming content from a website uh, from Politico, one of our customers, um, through Android Auto in the car. Uh, so whereas before, in order to reach your customer base, you always had to physically be at the device, uh, now you can do it while you're on a jog, um, driving to work, in the subway, uh, et cetera. Um, and once again, uh, just to throw some more numbers around this uh, and why speech is, or text to speech and voice is so important. Um, research shows that people can consume and interact uh, via voice about four times the rate uh, that they can read uh, or type. Um, so what this means is a far more accelerated digestion of content. Um, Gardner also states that about 20% of voice interactions over the next two, three years, uh, and about 50% of searches uh, by 21, or 2020 and 2021 uh, will be done through uh, things like uh, Siri, uh, being able to, like I have an Android so I'm not really on the Apple bandwagon, but uh, you can like double click for Google Assistant and just actually ask uh, your device and get a genuine result. Um, and not necessarily having to type it out, once again, kind of frees you up to do other things. Um, so uh, I'm gonna talk about a variety of products. Um, these are not necessarily endorsements. Uh, this one I do have an affiliation with, uh, but it's not a monetary pitch, I promise. Um, so Amazon uh, had an API that they released at reInvent, uh, their big tech conference back in 2016. Um, the focus of this was natural text-to-speech. Um, one of the things that was not available though was it was uh, basically it took a developer to implement. Somebody had to have a strong technical background in order to leverage this. So it was a very, very cool technology, um, but unfortunately it did not have a lot of adoption. Um, Amazon is one of our infrastructure partners at WP Engine and uh, kind of serendipitously we ran into this team uh, when uh, one of our partners was up there uh, talking about infrastructure stuff. Um, and they had kind of voiced an interest of like, hey, this WordPress thing is getting quite popular. Uh, maybe there's something uh, that we can do here, an opportunity, uh, and it felt like a really good fit for us. 
um, because it allows them to uh, you know, benefit from the entire reach of the WordPress ecosystem. Um, and then it's also Amazon coming in and investing in our community and showing up for the first time. Uh, this is really like the first time that they've ever uh, actually uh, made a product, maintained it, and keep it in the, uh, the repo. Um, it's also open source. Uh, if anybody wants to contribute or check it out, it is on GitHub. Um, now it is available in 27 languages and dialects, um, anything from Mandarin to Korean to Welsh. Uh, pretty fun stuff. We'll do a demo of that in a minute. Um, and once again, this is just really a play to open up multi-channel. It's a way to expand your listening audience uh, where you don't necessarily have that viewership uh, previously. Um, a lot of cases for things like Poly, uh, navigation is kind of a natural fit. Um, I'm sure we're all familiar with things like Google Maps. Uh, but some of the more interesting ones uh, is actually like content creation and being able to speak to your uh, editor uh, rather than type it in. Uh, video games, uh, they're actually using this for um, before voice actors come in and you have like a 3D model. Uh, they're able to mimic the speech patterns and map those. Um, and then I think my favorite one is this AI announcer icon. Um, there's a tsunami in uh, Australia a few years back and uh, basically took out uh, all of the broadcasting abilities. Um, so what they were able to do is they were able to send out EMS updates uh, using this service um, and keep uh, basically people in the know, uh, local in the community, uh, up on what was going on in the status of the tsunami, where it's safe, where you can get clean water, uh, et cetera. Uh, so now I'm gonna jump out of full screen real quick to give a quick demo. And uh, also, I actually forgot to mention at the beginning of the talk, um, all of these slides are already online. I will share a link to this uh, at the end. And I also did try to pepper it in with links. Um, so it's pretty interactive. Anything that is uh, discussed here today, uh, we'll have a link where you can read more about it later. It's, uh, it's a little small, isn't it? Okay, um, so this is the front end experience of Amazon Poly for WordPress. Um, so basically in the editor, we'll check that out in a moment, uh, but you basically just uh, create an article, uh, you connect it to your AWS account, um, and then it will render it into an MP3. Uh, you have a couple of options here. Uh, you can store that MP3 locally. Um, it is all uh, based on uh, at render. Um, so once you have the file, you own it. Um, if you are trying to make a more scalable solution, you can also do things like uh, store it on S3, uh, for more concurrency or use a CDN like CloudFront. Um, but just to give a quick idea of why this technology is kind of leaps and bounds above, um, pay attention to the speech inflections uh, where you have a pause, commas. Um, it has an understanding of the difference between uh, like contextual understanding, so the difference between live and live. Uh, it knows what to do with the percent sign after 28. Um, it's just really, really uh, come a long way in the last 10 years. I don't know if you ever remember uh, similar technologies from 10 years ago, they were pretty horrible. Uh, but let's just, and I do not have a volume check, so this is really loud, and I apologize. Amazon, Polytown. Is that okay? Working Camp Boston is an annual. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's okay. That is going to put a damper on some of the demos. Uh, yeah, but I don't have volume control, so I apologize. We'll try to work around it. Can you lower the volume on the widget? Oh, hey, that's a great idea. Nope. <laughs> oh, God. oh, okay, we can do it from Navy booth. Great. Conference celebrating WordPress, the open source software that powers over 28% of the internet. We'll have lecture style sessions, panels, and workshops about WordPress and the tech industry. If sitting me talks all day isn't your thing, we'll. Okay, uh, so you get the idea. Um, as you can see, it's not quite human, um, and there are, like I said, 20 different, or 27 different languages and dialects. Uh, this isn't actually one of my favorite ones, uh, but some of them get pretty close. I don't think we're getting it to the point where you can be fooled, um, but it's also not terribly abrasive to the ears, in my opinion. Um, and then also, uh, just in April, there was an update to this service. Uh, it is now leveraging a second API uh, called uh, AWS Language Services, uh, which has translate features. Um, so another cool thing you can see right above the player there, uh, it now has the ability to translate uh, the content that was authored in English uh, into English, Spanish, uh, German, uh, French, and Portuguese. So give that a quick spin. Um, and it also, in my opinion, does a much better job than like Google Translate uh, on the transcription as well. I'm going to solve the problem anymore. We've got a camp of Boston that's had a year that you can run for us. You've got a press file. The open source software, you've got 
uh, and that's all out of the box. So the only two things you need to get this set up um, is AWS credentials, um, and then it's pretty simple. We'll go to the admin real quick and just explore some of the settings. All right, nobody right on my key. Um, all right, so yeah, basic setup. All you really have to do is select a region. Uh, so this is also used for the S3 storage, but it's basically where the transcription happens. Uh, you have options to display the player either before the post, after the post, or not at all. Um, and the not at all case is more for the uh, RSS syndication to iTunes, which we will show right after this slide. Um, yep, and so just a quick peek at all the languages that are currently available. Um, some of them are kind of fun. Uh, Icelandic is always a good one to listen to. Uh, but quite a few options there. Uh, it has SSML support, so this is a markup language for doing things like whispers. Uh, so you can whisper, shout, uh, suppose you had like a quote embedded in your text. Uh, you can wrap that in an SSML tag, um, and you can have it like change the voice that it's using. Uh, so you can kind of have like a conversation flow throughout your article. Um, these are things are just related to S3 and storage. Um, and then uh, the polycast feature. Uh, so this is an RSS feed. Uh, and like I said, I'm trying to make a case for getting people back interested in RSS. Uh, it's still a really, really great way to syndicate content. Um, so this is an RSS template of the sole purpose of submitting to iTunes. Um, it has a few, uh, you can see actually the iTunes markup, um, but it can be based on any taxonomy, uh, tag, or archive. So you can create an individual podcast uh, based on author, date, um, if you just wanted one for your WordPress content or just your news and politics section, uh, you can segment those out. And just to kind of give you a quick peek of what this looks like. Um, so all I've done here is I took that URL uh, that we just visited and submitted it to iTunes. Um, and then it appears in the library. It takes about two days to appear. Uh, they do have like a vetting process. Um, but this is basically uh, Politico. Um, so for those who don't know, Politico is a news and politics magazine uh, based out of Brussels. Um, and one of their goals online is to try to win the mornings. A lot of commuter bases and they need their news very, very early. Um, so when we first uh, were approaching them with this idea, um, the podcast feature was actually the thing that they were most interested in. Uh, a lot of people to make their coffee while consuming the news and once again take it with them as they jumped on the tube uh, or went for a morning jog. Um, just a quick demo of this again. Uh, this is actually a different voice. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, and let's get back to the slides. Okay, so that is one of the voice technologies. Um, another one is made by our friends over at Alley Interactive, a guy named Tom Harrigan. Um, this one is more focused around the interaction and the integration with Alexa. Um, so what you can do here, uh, all configurable via the WordPress admin, uh, you can add your own custom skills. You, once again, you do need an Amazon account, uh, but it's all pretty easy to configure. Um, it does not take a super uh, high level of uh, technical aptitude to set up. Um, and the idea here is you can do things like, hey, Alexa, read me my flash briefing. Um, and I have an example of this here. Uh, I did not bring an Alexa device with me, uh, so I'm going to use this software version of it, which is a little buggy. Um, this is not an official Amazon product, but it's kind of cool if anybody's ever doing any development with uh, Alexa or you want to play around with this. Uh, Echosim.io. Um, let's try it. Alexa, read me my flash briefing. Work this morning. Okay. Um, so anyway, what this would normally be doing is, uh, so using that plugin that we just saw, uh, Voice WP, uh, it would submit to my personal account where I have my uh, news publications that I subscribe to, uh, and then I could just ask for my flash briefing in the morning uh, as I'm moving around the house. Uh, once again, sorry, the demo kind of fell short there. Um, another cool voice technology. Um, this one is also a little bit different. Uh, this comes from Weston Ritter at XWP. Um, Weston does a lot of work in the accessibility uh, space. And this is less about reaching more customers and more about um, making it easier to follow content along. So this is a read-along uh, project, also open source, uh, but it actually works completely offline using OSX's native uh, text-to-speech engine. Um, it only works in Firefox and Chrome at the moment, uh, but we also expect more uh, of the browsers to pick this up in the future. And just to give a quick idea of how this one works, 
Uh, once again, very short, but keep in mind that this is all offline. So this is not pre-rendered. Um, it's all coming natively from the um, As you can see, it's reading along. Um, this would be great for uh, basically, as you read along, you can pause. Uh, you can also rewind forwards and backwards, um, which is something that you can't do with the pre-rendered MP3s. Uh, so you have controls. I know they're a little small. Um, you can fast forward and rewind through the article. Uh, if you want to reread something, uh, maybe you're having a story with your kids or working on reading, uh, they can actually read along and keep track. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool too. And all right, uh, another cool technology that's coming out is this notion in the chatbots. Um, with cloud uh, coming online and processing power becoming cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, um, it's also allowed uh, machine, uh, excuse me, machine learning to kind of have a, a little bit of a boom. Um, so uh, both Amazon and Google have services uh, that kind of work in this space. Um, Google's offering is called Dialogflow. Um, and what you can basically do is set up uh, just a bunch of strings uh, and run a training model uh, so that you can basically create a assistant uh, for whatever you want. So if you have a car dealership site, uh, you can set up something to be like, show me your current inventory. Um, Amazon has a similar uh, service called Amazon Lux. Um, same exact thing, it's a way to build uh, conversation interfaces, uh, probably very useful in things like support organizations. Um, and before anybody asks, this is not what we use uh, when we get our thing. <laughs> Um, so my chatbot uh, is an open source plugin. Uh, there's a WordPress integration for uh, Dialogflow, um, and we'll take a quick demo of that one. Um, so once again, just simply install the plugin. Uh, configured. Uh, I used one of the uh, prepackaged chatbots available through Dialogflow. Um, the one I chose was Tell Me a Joke. Um, so I don't really know if the jokes are going to be funny or not, but we'll give it a go. So you can uh, just be like, tell me a joke. And so right now, uh, it reached out over an API, hit the Dialogflow service, and it came back. Uh, bank is a place that will lend you money if you can prove that you don't need it. Um, yeah, funny joke. <laughs> uh, uh, but once again, I think the takeaway here is just it's another way to uh, reach uh, a larger customer base without necessarily having to have uh, humans on the ground, um, and these things could get pretty complex. Uh, once again, it's based off a training model, uh, so it will improve over time. Um, and my chatbot is the name of the plugin, uh, also available in the WordPress repo. Um, another interesting uh, thing, this one's a little bit more emerging, uh, but there's some people doing some really cool things in this space. Uh, so the Internet of Things. Um, this is everything from Amazon Dash to your Nest, um, or any uh, Arduino or Raspberry Pi projects. Um, what you're looking at here, the picture on the right, um, so uh, as you notice, the, the topic of this talk was WordPress is the hub of your digital experience. Um, this is, uh, came out of one of our hackathons. This is our analog uh, experience machine. Uh, so this is controlling a, uh, a WordPress site uh, through different knobs and stuff. It's not really, uh, it's more of a proof of concept uh, and fun than anything. Um, you can't really see it, but on the far left, I think my favorite feature is the toilet handle, uh, which is how you flush the cache. I thought that was pretty clever. Um, so yeah, using uh, services like If This Then That and the REST API, uh, there's a uh, If This Then This integration called Make, which allows you to de define your own uh, skill for If This Then That. Um, a guy named George Stefanis uh, has a cool uh, proof of concept uh, for WooCommerce, uh, where he actually has like an Arduino device that will uh, show a count uh, from the store of how many orders have been fully processed through a gateway uh, and then reflect that number on a digital display. Uh, so as you're walking around your shop, you can see uh, how many more times you need to go to the post office this day. Um, a personal project of mine that I did on a Raspberry Pi um, hits the WordPress.org. So every time there's a new release of WordPress, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but there's a counter and it'll show you like the number of downloads. Um, so it just kind of basically tracks uh, the release uh, and will show me how many people uh, are using the latest version of WordPress. Um, and then George also uh, at WordCamp US this last year uh, had an interactive uh, WordPress badge uh, so that people could visit his site uh, while he was on stage and actually like change the lights. Um, once again, these are you know kind of experimental and maybe not uh, terribly practical, uh, but it is an example of how WordPress can be used to uh, hit things that are not necessarily based out of the browser. Um, once again, machine learning. Uh, this is like I said, a result of uh, basically cheap processing power. 
Um, and it's kind of a buzzword, but what it really means is it means learning uh, how to do something based off a very large data set. So using as many examples as you possibly can uh, to answer questions. Uh, this is how Polly achieves their natural text-to-speech feel, um, is because they actually have a very, very large set of human voices that were modeled, um, and through repetition and uh, constant uh, updating of that model, um, it's actually improving. So uh, the API is actually more natural sounding than it was a couple of months ago. Uh, Google has quite a few offerings uh, in this space, uh, cloud translation. Um, these are all basically uh, backed by machine learning. Um, people, if you're ever uh, traveling out of the country, this Google Translate thing is quite amazing. Uh, cloud Vision is image recognition. Um, you also have speech and video intelligence. Um, and then once again, the dialogue, uh, the chatbot, which is the conversational uh, interaction that we saw earlier. Um, a couple of things that are more in the WordPress space. Um, so this is a product called WordLift. Um, and what it basically does, uh, once again, through very large data sets, uh, looks at your content and makes content suggestions. Uh, so it's able to suggest featured images. Um, it's also able to make uh, SEO improvements uh, and schema changes. Uh, so not only is your content uh, enhanced uh, through extra content you did not have before, um, it actually will improve uh, the search engine optimization of it. Uh, so your content is not only uh, enhanced, but also reaching more people. Um, also available uh, in the WordPress.org repo. Um, this is a product that has been sunset, uh, but I think that they were onto something really cool here. I really hope that somebody picks it up. Uh, it's a project called Brenify. Um, what they were doing is basically doing event tracking uh, across your WordPress install. What was really interesting about this one is it actually had the ability to work cross site. Um, so for example, I have site A, um, and you're a user of mine. Uh, if I have found that you know you are a particular fan of the New England Patriots, when you visit Site B, I will already know that about you. Um, so I can not only do things like targeting uh, content, uh, but also improve revenue through ad marketing. Um, so I, I think this is a really interesting one. Uh, it's also probably one of the ones that people are uh, less comfortable with. Uh, back to the, uh, the generational gaps, right? Um, I myself think this is borderline creepy. Uh, but in the name of getting market share, uh, the younger generations don't seem to mind. Uh, more personalized experience is more valued. Um, another one, uh, this is a, uh, a feature inside of Jetpack called After the Deadline. Um, this is also a way of improving content. Uh, I don't actually know the, uh, the machine learning uh, service backing this uh, to try to find out, uh, but it does things like uh, can use for misuse of words, uh, to catch cliches, It'll give you uh, content suggestions, um, kind of in the same way that WordLift was doing it for SEO. Um, this is more focused around content. Um, so you get things like spell check, grammar, uh, and contextual understanding. Um, this is another cool one. Uh, so virtual reality. Uh, this one was a little bit hard for me to wrap my head around, because I was like, why would you ever build a uh, virtual reality application to WordPress? Um, doesn't necessarily feel like the right tool for the job all the time. Uh, but then one of my colleagues uh, began to convince me. Um, so uh, using the REST API, uh, basically the editor experience for this um, is you upload a 360 image uh, into the featured image section, uh, and then you can target different areas uh, of the image and insert different content. Uh, so this one is very, very proof of concept. He actually has a, a video game that he's working on called A Broken Place, uh, which will also be powered by the REST API. Uh, but where it really started to make sense for me is um, if you think of maybe like in-game purchasing uh, through an e-commerce store. Uh, so if you have a video game that is driven uh, and the content is being read out of the REST API uh, through something like a motion where you reach out and pick up a product, you could put it into your backpack uh, and you could actually have that be a point of sale through an e-commerce store. You could update the pricing because it's all fed in through the API. Um, it's a really interesting way to manage uh, the content of a video game. Um, and once again, also open source, uh, if anybody would like to check that out, um, VR WordPress, uh, actually I think it's called VR Press, um, and then the GitHub repo is linked as well. Um, so, uh, so some emerging content opportunities. Uh, once again, I think content personalization probably has the biggest upside. Uh, it's really, really challenging. Um, but I think that if you can nail this, uh, you probably onto a million dollar market, a multi-million dollar market. Uh, being able to do things like showing people uh, content that you already know that they're going to like um, is a very forward-thinking way, uh, especially like things like media verticals, right? 
Um, if you wanted to get really crazy with it, uh, integrating something like Spotify with uh, something like the Rolling Stone, right? If Rolling Stone was able to digest my Spotify playlist, um, you would know that I am a huge fan of Run the Jewels, but don't like uh, someone else, for example. Uh, so I'm more likely to engage more clicks, mean more ads served, um, which means more profitability. Uh, In-game purchases we just discussed. Um, Chatbots uh, can also minimize support cost uh, if you're able to train them to a point uh, where they're actually natural. Um, I know a lot of us have aversions to pressing one to get a real person, uh, but I actually think this is getting uh, almost to the point uh, of being pretty viable. Um, something cool that came out of the University of Cambridge uh, is a service called Apply Magic Sauce. Um, and this is uh, not necessarily directly related to WordPress, but I think that you could interact with their APIs. Um, so what this is going to do is it scrapes uh, all your Twitter and Facebook information and builds a profile around you, and it is creepily accurate. Um, so if you were to basically build a profile uh, back to you delivering content that people want to see, uh, it can do everything from tell you uh, gender to age demographics to uh, likely IQ, uh, likely part of the world you live in, what your preferred dialects are. Um, and then another one that just came out uh, also from reInvent uh, is Deep Lens. Uh, this is a standalone uh, video camera attached to a small computer um, where I see this being really useful. Uh, so basically you train a model in the cloud and then you download it to this little deep lens device. Uh, but you can have things like interactive billboards, right? Uh, you can start doing serving ads uh, on a billboard. For example, if someone is wearing a red baseball cap, uh, maybe they would like a blue one. Uh, but if they're not wearing a hat at all, maybe you would be more interested in selling them hair products. Uh, so I think we'll also see more of these sort of things. Uh, these are some resources. Uh, I talked about quite a few of these, um, but just to keep an eye on, uh, Headless and Mobile, uh, still, I did, you know, REST API was uh, one of the better things to happen with WordPress, um, but you know, it doesn't, I think Gutenberg's kind of stole the thunder, uh, but it's still an active development, and it's really the backbone of doing a lot of these. Uh, AppPressor is a uh, way to take a WordPress site and basically make a native app out of it, uh, so that you can basically Without having to uh, build a native app uh, specifically for both devices, uh, you can throw it into AppPressor and get both an iOS and an Android version of your site. Uh, the voice assistants uh, we covered, uh, so Amazon Poly for WordPress, uh, Voice WP, and Spoken Word, uh, all doing slightly different things. Um, and also, we are working with Tom uh, on Voice WP uh, so that Poly and Voice WP will integrate, so those two will be playing nice in the future. Uh, stay tuned so you can use Poly to. Uh, also create Alexa skills. Uh, the Internet of Things, such as the LED badge, um, and once again, the links, uh, almost all of these are links, so you can click through. Uh, the chatbot, Twilio is another interesting one. Um, and then, you know, the machine learning uh, through things like WordLift, Brenify, um, after the deadline, uh, and of course, uh, VR for WordPress. Um, some additional resources. Uh, so uh, at the very top of the talk, uh, we were talking about that Gartner study of defining uh, the difference between a content management system and digital experience. Uh, they do a pretty good job of explaining this, um, and I would encourage everyone, in the, if you only read one link out of here, uh, keep pace on this. Uh, this, is, this is how WordPress wins over the next few years, I think. Uh, we also have our uh, white paper that we did uh, on Gen Z. There's definitely some good insights in there. Links to Amazon Poly, uh, voice search optimization, um, how to properly do SEO for uh, voice search. Um, it's a little bit different, machine learning in Amazon, and once again, the VR project. So that concludes my talk. I have a few minutes, five minutes, uh, for questions. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, it's uh, wcbos.wpengine.com. Everybody hear that? Oh, okay. Right. Uh, wcbos, so like WordCamp boss, at uh, wpengine.com. Oh, I'm sorry, dot wpengine.com. I think it got posted to Twitter as well. So okay, great. Done improperly, 
machine learning approaches in this way are basically phrenology. Uh, they are reinforcing people's, uh, um, machine learning is just a way of training a system to make predictions based on pre-existing assumptions. And so they do reinforce those assumptions. And if you're making deductions about someone's IQ or gender or race or age, just be aware that that can be very reductive and can really have a negative impact uh, if it reinforces false assumptions. So most of the machine learning applications Stephen touched on, I think, are incredibly exciting and fascinating. But I'll also say, make sure that you take any recommendation with a grain of salt based on the fact that all of those recommendations are coming from our preconceptions around what things are related. Uh, that's very simple, Kevin. Kind of, thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, because we've actually, we've seen this a couple of times, right? Uh, Google Photos has had a few faux pas. Um, Twitter is definitely, uh, Facebook has also stepped in the mess. Um, I really appreciate you bringing that perspective. Thank you. Okay. I think we're good then. All right, thank you for having me. <laughs>